For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, you ain't trying to grow that stuff for you. For the record, live on me going all the way. For the record, ain't trying to link no time to waste. For the record. Hey, you know, you know why we here, man? <laughs> you gotta look at you no know cameras. why we here? Yeah, man. We done did it. <laughs> Lakers are back. It's been a long time. Hey, but man. that chip is here. We done got to enjoy two titles while, while we've been uh, back here stationed together. Well, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I was about to put on me a hoodie. You know, it's getting oh, yeah. kind of cold, man. The fire is out. <laughs> the heat is gone. <laughs> hey, man. Um, yo, congratulations, man. Yeah, thank you. Championship thanks, time, man. Ooh. Championship time, man. LeBron did the it king. three times. The three king. different teams, man. But uh, Well, we don't know about all those other teams, but he the king, he the king right now. Yeah, you ain't nobody he, till you do it with the Lakers. Yeah, man. you did it with the Lakers, man. Now we can respect you. Yeah, congratulations to the Lakers, man. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, but that's not why we here. Yeah, we, we put ourselves on here. We said, like, hey, if they win, yeah. we was going to review the Kobe the Mamba mentality. Mamba mentality, man. All right, so we're gonna do it in the same style as like we did the Fifty Cent book. Uh, so we're gonna go with the top five things that we got out of it. So uh, I don't know. Do you want to start off? We'll go with one. Yeah, inch. man. So uh, the first one I got. So as we was reading this book, man. Um, of course, I'm a hoop nerd, so I was like super motivated by it the entire time. Um, I was all into the details. And if you watch the Kobe details and all that, how he breaks it down, it's just like how brilliant his mind is. But what I found dope in this book was just how simple things, how he approached things. You know what I mean? And it wasn't anything crazy like you got to do any crazy regimen. He just stuck with the basics. So like one of the first points in like leadership tools that stuck out to me was he said, uh, you know, to be a better player, you always have to prepare, prepare. And then prepare some more. And I know when we first started this pod, you know what I'm saying? Like you was writing down notes. <laughs> we, was, we was joking on you. And, um, you know, but that was your way of preparing. And at work, that's kind of my way of preparing. Hey, I got, I'm a visual. I'm a reader. I'm a, I need to listen. I need to, to study all the nuances of everything I need to know how to do in order to execute. You know what I mean? And I'm willing to stay late and put in them hours to do it. And then that's kind of what Kobe said with that one. And it's simple. Prepare, prepare and over prepare because you don't ever want your bosses to not have that faith in you that you can carry through or that you can't see plays 10 steps ahead. So what would you think about the preparation? Yeah, 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 yeah. So like on that, man, I remember like I was watching the, the movie he did with uh, with uh, the guy from New York. Uh, Spike Lee. Spike Lee. Yeah. Put in work. Right. And uh, yeah, the way he just like explained things and like going in like extreme details about the games, I was just like, man, I didn't know you like really like break down the game like that. He was breaking it down like a coach or even more in depth than a coach, like somebody like, and he was just like remembering on the spot, like like it was just, just happening. Oh, I'm going down here. I see this, this, and this, right? And I was like, that gotta come from, over preparation, watching a ton of tapes, you know, breaking down the game for uh, way, way deeper than anybody else is going to do it. Truly loving the game. And uh, that, that obviously tells on that practice, practice, practice. That's what you got to do. Oh, like, that's some of the things and, he talked about all the time was like, that's all the players that came to the Lakers. He wanted them to go as hard in game and in practice. He was like, practice is where you really earn your medal yep. because it translates over to the game. Yep. And uh, yeah, and he was talking about that in every aspect of it. It was like in his weightlifting, in his uh, in in his watching the tapes, in the way he went at practice. You know, when he went uh, like weightlifting, all that stuff. That's what he was saying. It was just like he treated everything like it was the game day. Yeah, man. So, but preparation, man, is key. Uh, you can't expect to be great, no matter how good you are at certain things. At some point, you're going to be weak in certain areas. You may be the man at your old job or the man at whatever you used to do, but you walk into a new arena. It's just like starting all over again. So you got to prove yourself, learn what you got to learn and get back to where you used to be in your old job. So over preparation, they never hurt nobody. And putting in a good day's work for me is always a good thing, you know. 
Yeah. But what you got uh, as so, far as your uh, point? My point plays off that a little bit is going to be uh, when he talked about fast. He was talking about it in the book when he was talking about lifting weights and like he he had his base routine and he would add little things to it, but he would never stray away from his base routine. And uh, I think that was like sprinkled throughout the book and other aspects of his game because it was just like. He always practiced the fundamentals to the T and then he would sprinkle in or learn something new, watch a tape, learn somebody else move, learn how to counter that move and add that in. But he would always go back to practicing the basics of everything. So like, yeah, you you you, you can't get caught up into the fast. Just like, oh, everybody's doing the, what the Euro step when everybody got in there. If you practice only that and don't don't practice the old crossovers, you're setting yourself up to get get burned later on by old move you know what i mean yeah. and uh so just keep put uh, like you want to build your toolbox you don't want to take away from it yeah and it's kind of like being scatterbrained you know like being a jack of all trades and master of none kobe had that innate ability to focus on one thing for extreme long periods of time until he got it right you know what i mean and then move on to the next thing like you said like a lot of people don't have that trait to sometimes you got to get good at the craft and understand what industry or whatever you're into. You know, if you're going to work for UPS or whatever job you're working, you need to figure out that process at the current point you're at and then master it, get to the next point. Because if you don't, then you can't skip the steps. It's the steps are very important in his process and very important in anything that you're going to do because it's kind of difficult to to figure out the whole process without dedicating yourself. You know what I yeah. mean? I'll, I'll throw out one at you that uh, I like. I had a boss throw out at one time about me uh, or just saying to people who work with it. It was like, uh, so the basic memorizing your basic things of your job. He was like, that's that's key. He was like, people don't think, though. They was like, oh, I can go back and I can look in the book and I can go back and look in the instructions. And I always got that with me. I don't have to memorize anything. But he said, like, so but if I go to Subway and I tell him I want a sandwich. Do they go back and look up like, oh, man, so that's three slices of this. That's do whatever. Cut but, down on the time. Do they do they do that? No, no. So. At that point in time, he was saying, "You, I go pick up the next subway guy. He'll take over your job because you worthless to me because you don't want to take the time to learn that. And the subway guy will at least turn off, take his time to learn the, the different sandwiches and how to make it. It's off memory from their point. But you think your job ain't important enough to uh, go off memory. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's a valid point. Like you some some of the things you just got to commit to memory, because at a certain point, me as a I guess I don't know if I, I'm not top management, but middle management. I'll stop telling somebody how to do something at a certain point yep. just so you can go back, read, understand, do it a few times. And I will even allow you to fail. But me allowing you to fail those few times and kind of getting over those humps is going to be beneficial to me as your boss in the long term, because now I know when I leave you alone, you can actually do that task and I don't have to think about it. I can go handle other things and not have to. Did you finish that? Like nobody wants to be that type of boss and micromanage. So no, nobody. sometimes you have to work those mental trickeries with people to get them back on task and to actually care about their job. And, and some people just don't get it. You know what I mean? But it is what it is with that, man. OK, what's the next point you got? All right. So the next one I got is uh, he said and he was talking about just over time, like this is probably like his 10th year in the league. And he, he was saying like the more experience he became no matter what people are going to like you or not like you so be authentic and let them like you or not like you for who you actually are it took me a long time in my life to realize you know you can fit into all these different crowds you can have your work crowd work buddies you can have your your off work buddies and all these different type of things and you can fit in all those different arenas but are you being yourself in all those different arenas do you feel like you are somebody else at work and at home? Or I mean, I know it's a professional side and, uh, you know, and just letting your hair down side. That's clear. But at your core. When your wife sees you at work, is she like, who is this dude? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like all your friends, like I, they wouldn't recognize you because you're a totally different person. 
that's kind of what I was getting there, but in a professional sense, like Kobe was the same Kobe, no matter who tells stories about him. Um, you look, you watch Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson's uh podcast. You you uh, who else? Uh Richardson, they they also had a podcast and uh what's his name? I forget, but there's a few other cats that have countless stories told after Kobe. And all of it is the same. Super competitive Super guy. Super competitive guy. He'll talk ish about you all, you know, but at the same tell time, you straightforward. he'll tell you straightforward. But then you talk about Meta World, World Peace in the book. He approached Meta World Peace same way. He approached Paul the same way he approached D Fish. It, everybody knew what he was about and he didn't have to switch it up. So when he would growl at you or would put you in your place or say something that would embarrass you, Nobody really took offense to it the later he got in his career because he was like, you know what, I'm gonna just be me. But I, I, I know you had a point before we kind of <laughs> yeah, yeah, went because off he on did talk one. about it like, uh, like because he 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 started off trying to be the clean cut guy, and then everybody knows cookie like, cutter like, answers. Yeah, yeah, after his incident, like uh, uh, and then all that went down, and he hit the 81 points. He came back a different beast, uh, and that's when that's when I think like the mama mentality kind of really like clicked with him, and it was just like, hey, I just got to be me. If I'm if I'm telling them straightforward, I got to be honest about everything, and that's when he became more open. I think he got more love for it, and and that's true. Like. That's true to it. Like if the honest that you, the more honest that you're gonna be, the more people will gravitate to you. Some people are just gonna hate you regardless. It's, you can't make. It's too many people in this world. Everybody is not gonna love you. So you and just, that's more, just get that's that up. more energy out of you being different people around in different sections instead of just being you. You don't ever have to forget. I mean, not saying you're a liar, but you don't ever have to forget who you are at your core because. If you said it in one setting, you're probably going to say it in this setting and you're going to be this way in this setting. So I, I like that, man. And it, it takes people years to really learn to be themselves because nobody wants to be disliked. No, nobody, nobody wants to be disliked. You want to be liked by people and uh, you want to do what's right. But at a certain point um, in, in, in business, you get to a point where it's like, fuck it, man. Like it is what it is. This is my style. Take it or leave it. And. If people leave it, then you move on and yeah. you, you keep it rolling. You try, know to I mean? catch, try to catch as many as you can. Exactly. All right. So uh, my next point was just like when he was talking about the off season, how the off season really wasn't the off season for him. And that's the way you got to uh, attack everything. It's just like if you truly want to be great, if you really want to be great, you got to be willing to put in all the extra time in the world. And then you got to be going at it like hungry every single day while everybody else sitting at the house, chilling, vacationing. You got to be putting in that work because you want to you got your goal that's set up way ahead of everybody else, above everybody else. So uh, to reach that, it's going to take a lot of work. Anybody who told you it ain't going to take no work, lie to you. That's basically what he said. And uh, basically, uh, he was talking about his offseason, just continuing to just maintain the same pace he does during the offseason because he knew whatever little flaw that he had or the reason he went out of the playoffs early was because of some flaw that he had in his game. And he was determined to make his game flawless. Uh, and he didn't care how many shots that took, how many layups that took in the offseason. He was willing to put in that work to do it. Basically, what I get out of it and I say here on it is just like he had that Bruce Banner mentality. You remember on the, yeah, the Avengers yeah. movie yep. when he said that? He's like, well, how, well, how did you uh, hold him in? He was like, Trick is I'm always angry. He's always ready. You know what I mean? And that's the way I took from Kobe on this. Like, no, you ain't gonna never catch him slipping because he always in shape. He was always ready for the net for the game. Yeah, true that, man. And I kind of what I take from that is just like the uh the talent portion. And that's the important thing in what you said. Like, he had the talent. Everybody knew it. They saw it from his early high school games all the way up until he retired. But what people didn't have that had similar talent. Is that work ethic? It, that's all you have to do is remain consistent with that work ethic. So I think that's important too because a lot of people out here are super talented. They can do things in their sleep, but they don't dedicate themselves to whatever craft that they're gonna, whatever field they're gonna put themselves in. So they kind of fall by the wayside or they don't follow through on things because you know you don't want to wake up at twelve a.m. to go lift those weights like. Kobe did religiously or whatever it is, put in that two hours to get on that online course to learn about something that can make you better at your job. 
that nobody has asked you to do. But you, you know that you need to get better at that. So what are you going to do? Keep letting it linger and say, hey, I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to that. Or are you going to accomplish whatever feat that is? And now you get that promotion. Now you get whatever opportunity that may arise at that, that job or, you know, what you're getting into. So that's an excellent point there, man. All right. So he was uh, talking about histories, right, of learning the greats and where they stood as far as their moves and just how they approached the game. And he also was talking about um, how he correlated that into his teammates as well. So learning what made them tick, because early on in his career as a leader of that team, he was trusted with that team at what, 20 Three twenty four. Like yeah, after young, yeah. I mean, because he, he was, was eight, young as one, eighteen. Yeah, at so the time. probably like seven years in. So he's eighteen, twenty, about twenty five uh, when Shaq left. So he was entrusted with that team, and really, um, the way he went about his leadership style was bullheaded initially. But as he realized, like I gotta get back to a championship because he, you know, he wanted to win another one. Shaq had got one with the Heat. So as he got guys in on that team. He approached them differently. Like when he was scoring, getting, winning those scoring titles and stuff like that, it was just like, get out, get out the way. I'm going to score. I'm young. I'm still got fresh legs. But as time went along, he needed these guys. He needed the Paul Gasols, the Metal World Pieces, the uh, Lamar Odo, so on and so forth. So kind of what he got by that touching the nerve at the right time is as a manager, as a leader of your organization, you're going to have to learn what ticks for each person, whether that's time off, whether that's extra money, whether that's a lateral move into something that somebody really likes to do or learning what they can do best and putting them in position to win and pushing the right buttons at the same time, which is also difficult. So I know um, I struggle with that as a leader, too, because sometimes I have to just find what motivates a person yeah. because I may look at them like, Damn, man, like, come on, what? Just, just figure it out. But eventually you find it and then you keep pushing and pushing and pushing and then you get the best out of that person. But it's important you learn that early on or you set the tone yeah. very early. Yeah. And uh, I, I definitely agree with that. And it's it's just like, uh, I mean, that's kind of how I didn't approach like work all together anyway. It was like I learned. I can push my people and just tell them they're going to work, 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 and it's never going to get them anywhere. So what I started doing was just like talking to them, find out what their interest is outside of the job, find out how I can get them to improve in that portion of their life. And then they was more willing to just work and stay longer or do whatever it takes to get the product done uh, because they knew I cared about the you cared their, about their free time. outside of outside yeah, yeah. of just the job. Yeah. 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 So I, and that's kind of I think that's what he did. Got to know the person a little bit more find out what they interests were and make sure that he was there to like in tune with their interests and then you're going to get a better product out of them right so like with matt barnes you know he actually got matt barnes over to the lakers and they had beef that prior season but he was like anybody that could stand up to me and throw the ball in my face and stand toe to toe i want in my foxhole paul gasol speaking spanish and them having that eclectic taste and opera and art and all that different type of stuff. And then Metal World Peace, he can connect with him too. And I'm just throwing out some of the guys that he talked about on his team. But, you know, that's kind of how you become a good leader is understanding what your people like off the court when you're talking basketball because you can't even become a team on the court unless you guys are actually cool outside of it. Yeah. I think that's just the way for uh, him to do things. But what else you got? And the final thing, I think to round up this mama mentality, I think we done hit on it a couple of times up in here and it's spread throughout this book. I think this whole mama mentality, the number one thing is, man, you're going to have to make some sacrifices, some big time sacrifices. <laughs> yes, and uh, he talked about the the three things that he had in his life. He had his goal. He wanted to win championships. He wanted to be the greatest. He had his family, which he still wanted to be the, the dad that was there for him and everything. And then uh, uh, he had to sleep. One of them had to go. One of them had to go to make sure all the other goals could get achieved. So he sacrificed sleep. So that's why he was famous for his 3 a.m. workouts and making sure he had the gym two hours. And he said the way he uh, fixed that was just like he would take the little naps, you know, make sure he get in his little naps and that would re-energize him for the full day, uh, which man, they have done studies on and it does work. Uh, and it, I, I guess that's 
uh, I know I give that up a lot too. So like yeah. I can definitely relate to him on that portion. Like when we know it, like we got our regular job. I got to spend my family time, and then we got this pod. Like it, it takes up a lot of time. So uh, yeah, yeah, man. And uh, one particular instance that he spoke on that uh, kind of touched me was just the family aspect of it all. You know what I mean? And that's the one that kind of got me kind of choked up as I was reading it because he was the whole reason he said he did it was so that he can wake up and take his girls to school. You know what I mean? And that was consistent throughout. And like, you don't, a guy at that stature, you know, he can pay people to take his kids to school and, and all these different type of things that he has more money than he can deal with at the time. But he wanted to make those lifestyle changes to still be somewhat of a family man and, and to fit his family. And so I took that as like, all right, mental note, check. You got to make sure no matter what you're doing, no matter how passionate you are about it, you have to fit that time in for your family. Now, if that means I got to, we got to do this podcast or whatever we got to do, but now you up editing at two in the morning because now everybody sleep. They don't demand your time at that time. The only person that probably suffers is your old lady that may roll over and you're not there. But you know your lady and she knows what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Trying to do something that you love, but you're not taking away family time and you're waking up in the middle of the night. And I thought that was so dope that all of that centered around just family. Yep. So thought that was dope, man. So, uh, but yeah, this, this book was great. If you have a chance to read it, it's a really, um, quick read. Well, I mean, well, it took me like a couple of hours. Like, I mean, it was just like a yeah, two hours. I spent like, Two hours, three hours, maybe total reading it uh, over the course of a few days. I probably could have read it in one day if I wanted to. Um, also, aside from the leadership aspects, has a lot of hoop nerd stuff in there. Oh, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it was some lot of dirty stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we can keep going because I, I, <laughs> he talked about the ref. Yeah, oh, yeah. He the, was the, the ref cheap. handbook, man. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. He read the <laughs> read the ref handbook so he could find a way around it to cheat. Hey, that's a, that ain't even cheating, man. That's cheating. just smart. That's smart. That's, that's smart. smart. Hey, you got to know what they're looking for. Exactly. So you, ain't, you don't fall in those pit holes. Even you know? how he would hold certain players' arms. In which the ref can see just just classic Kobe, man. Um, you know, but like like you said, trying man. to get every advantage, man. That's what it takes. Like you gotta find out all the ins and outs of uh you gotta know where not to go, where not to go on the court and stuff like this to to get to that level of greatness. So yeah, yeah. The mama mentality, man, is real. It's definitely real. I feel like uh it's still living on throughout a lot of people. I think a lot of uh, successful people already have it or are they're halfway there and just his little speeches or little, little uh, talks up in here can get you that step a little bit further over there but uh, basically what it takes is like dedication dedication hard work practice and 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 drive precisely man I think you wrapped it up quite nicely man uh, you know, definitely check this book out we trying to do leadership type stuff or whatever in a in a unique way. We don't want to read the traditional books that everybody reads. No disrespect to them. You get a lot out of those uh, traditional leadership books on or how to do things a little bit more uh, better and more practical. But I seem to get a little bit more from guys that I actually watched over the course of yeah. 20 years or so doing their thing that I looked up to, whether it was through idolization or just through I see what this guy's doing and I want to emulate it in my field. So dope book. Highly recommend it. Get it for your kids if they never seen Kobe play. Um, any last words? Uh, nah, I mean, if you just want to be dedicated, man, like that, the, I, the level of dedication and sacrifices this dude made, it's just beyond me, man. It's, I, I would have never thought, you, you know what I mean? You think when you get that money, like you get to relax, but it, it, he never relaxed, not not one second. Uh, so, uh, you know, shots out to LeBron for bringing the chip on home, but we know why he did it. He had him on his mind the whole time. Kobe, we're going to miss yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Rest in peace, Kobe and Gigi, man. All right, man. We out. DSC out, man. We out. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, you ain't trying to grow that stuff for you. For the record, live on me going all the way. For the record, ain't trying to link no time to waste. For the record. 